Hi, I'm Andrew with JVR Industries. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to change the oil in a Bush R5 series oil lubricated vacuum pump. In this video, we're gonna be changing the oil on a PRS Mini Promax roll stock machine, but these instructions would um, also work for any R5 series of Bush vacuum pumps. So this is a Bush R5 R40, so it's a two horsepower vacuum pump that we're gonna change oil in. What you're gonna need is obviously oil. You can either use Bush OEM oil. Uh, you could use our vac oil. JVR has our own exclusive line of vac oils. Um, and then Bush oil filters or a man oil filter, which is also what we sell as the alternative. So tools that you're gonna need, you're gonna need some sort of filter wrench. You're gonna need, or a pair of pliers. You're gonna need a funnel. And then you're gonna need something to collect the oil, whether it be a bag. Uh, I like to use vacuum bags because most uh, facilities are going to have vacuum bags because these are primarily used in the vacuum packaging industry, um, but also uh, you could use a drain pan or something along those lines to collect the oil. So every Bush vacuum pump is going to have a drain plug. It's typically located on the fan side of the module. In this case, uh, I will identify it. Here's our drain plug. The lower plug is always going to be the drain. The upper will be the fill. And then in the middle, you're going to have your sight glass. This will actually tell you at what point you need to fill up your oil. So in this case, we're actually a little bit low on oil. So it's definitely a good time that we should be changing it. So with your pair of pliers, adjustable wrench, or if you have the correct size socket, you're just going to want to loosen up this drain plug. Now before you go too loose with it, you're going to want to get something under here. This machine does not really work well with a drain pan, a traditional drain pan configuration. That's why I definitely recommend a bag and vacuum bags work really good because they'll hold hot liquids, but also um, they're thick enough that uh, you won't have leaks. So just kind of cup it underneath there, spin this off with your fingers when you get close. Make sure you don't let the plug drop in there. Gently pull out and then just hold it there so you don't make a mess. All right, so once the oil slows to a trickle and it's not coming out anymore, you can take your drain plug. Make sure the O-ring, every drain plug is gonna have an O-ring around it. Make sure it does not stick um, to the opposing side. And if it does, peel it off and put it back into the groove. Then you can just thread it on by hand and simply hand tighten for now. That'll seal it off good enough that you can pull your bag away. Now, if you're using a bag, I would recommend giving it a good twist. If it's long enough, you can knot it. Um, I tend to use zip ties. You can throw a couple zip ties on here, pull it tight, and then you've got uh, a way to dispose of your oil in a responsible manner. Grab my pliers. You definitely don't have to crank on these. They're plastic, so just give it a little bit of a snug. And that's it as far as draining the oil goes. Now we're gonna go and remove the oil filter. So to remove the oil filter, it's just like in a car, if you've ever done a car oil change. You're either going to want to use an oil filter wrench. If you don't have that, you can use a pair of pliers that open up wide enough, or you can use a screwdriver and do the screwdriver trick method, which is, if you're in a desperate need, you can take a screwdriver, a long flathead screwdriver, pound it through the center of the, um, the filter, and then you can use that to pry and turn the filter. If all else fails, that will work. It just makes more of a mess. So in this case, since I have it, I'm gonna use an oil filter wrench. And filter wrenches, if you never used one before, as you pull on the opposing direction, it will tighten up. So if I pull this way, it's gonna tighten up and wrap its metal band around the filter. And then you can use it. Oop. Then you can use it as a pry barb, essentially. So I'm just gonna crack it loose. I'm going to use the same bag to drain the oil filter, but if you have a new bag, that's also great. You're going to want to cup it underneath the filter. And when you get to the last couple threads, you're going to start seeing some oil come out. So you want to hold it up there tight so it doesn't make a mess on you. Now, if you have a helper, you can have them grab the new oil filter. What you're gonna to wanna to do is grab the filter out. This is a lot easier if you have a helper. 
But in this situation, I will do it myself. Uh, you're going to take the oil filter, grab a little bit of oil. Now, if the old oil that came out isn't too dirty, you can just use a little bit of the old oil. Rub it around the perimeter gasket. This will allow the new one to go on nice and smooth and get the proper torque on it. Okay. All right, and then you can hand thread the filter on. Again, I'm doing all this while I hold the bag in place so I don't make a mess. It'll spin on relatively easy. And then I'll just snug it, just enough so that I don't continue to drip oil. Then you can pull the bag away and dispose of the oil. Okay, so after you dry off your hands of any oil residue, wipe off the filter. And then give it a, about a three quarter turn. Once the gasket touches, you wanna to give it about an additional three quarter turn. Pretty much as tight as you can go by hand. You don't wanna use that filter wrench to crank it on because you're just going to have a really hard time getting it off the next time. And if you're not sure if it's on tight enough, run your pump for an hour or so and then just take a peek and inspect underneath the filter. If you see a drip, then it means that you definitely need to tighten it up a little bit more. All right, so next we're gonna take off the fill plug so we can fill up our oil. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to use a funnel to make it uh, much easier to fill your oil and less messy. And then you're gonna to wanna to grab your favorite vacuum pump oil. In this case, we're using the JVR vac, um, vac oil, the number 46, because this is a two horsepower vacuum pump. If this were smaller than a two horsepower vacuum pump, we would be using our number 22. Uh, but anything a two horse or above, our number 46 works great for. We also have a line of synthetic oils if you're in a um, extreme duty, uh, very cold room, and you're using the machine for an extended period of time continuously, you might want to consider our synthetic oils. I'll install your funnel. And what we're going to be doing is filling until we're at about the three quarter level of this sight glass. I always want to go on the max side, and on the sides of these sight glasses, you'll always see. On every bush pump, there's gonna be a min and a max line. There'll be two arrows. We wanna fill it right to the max. Just enough that there's still a little bit of a bubble at the top of the sight glass. The reason we wanna go as high as possible is because since we drained everything out of the oil filter, when we go to run this, that level's gonna go down as it fills up the filter and it circulates through the system. So using our funnel, we're just gonna slowly fill the oil until it hits that max line. Okay, so now that we're at the max level, uh, we're ready to put our fill plug back on. So just like our drain plug, you don't want to over tighten it and you also want to make sure that O-ring is in place. Again, using our pliers or an adjustable wrench, we're just going to snug it down. And that is what it takes to change the oil in your Bush R5 series vacuum pump.